Hi, it's Kada. <laughs> I don't have the evil laugh down. <laughs> mm -mm. Hi, it's Kada. Welcome to spooky season. We are officially, officially, officially in spooky season. Like, I think the whole month of October is the spookiest of the season. No argument there. So, continuing my series of Barbie as characters from spooky movies, today's theme is Barbie as Final Girls. The Final Girl is a trope in horror movies, usually slasher films. It refers to the last girl or woman alive to confront the killer. The Final Girl is the sole survivor of a group of people, usually teens, who are being chased by a murderous villain. And she gets the final confrontation with the murderer. She's also usually the only one who refuses sex, drugs, and other types of behavior, unlike her friends who get murdered. So she's usually the good girl or the smart girl. Some suggest that the final girl could also be saved at the last minute by someone else, like a police officer or savior male. But for me, I define the final girl as the one who defeats the villain all by herself without help, especially from a man. Her character development throughout the movie is awesome. She might start out as a nice, innocent girl, such as Laurie Strode, or even a self-centered sorority girl like Tree Geldman. But at the end of it, she has become powerful. She's used skills that she didn't even know she had to outsmart the killer. She's a survivor, and with her experience, now she can rescue others. So, I have turned Barbie into four, kind of five, very well-known final girls. I have to say this was a very ambitious project, and um, some of them I think turned out really great, but a couple of them, meh, you'll have to let me know what you think. But first, I'm going to pan across them real quick. Can you guess who they are, just at first glance? You'll have to let me know if you identified any of them immediately. So FYI, these movies are very well-known horror movies. So I am probably going to be giving some spoilers here. I'll put timestamps at the bottom if you feel like you want to skip past any of them so that you don't get spoilers, you are welcome to do so. First we have Laurie Strode from 1978's Halloween. I chose this 1976 twist and turn Barbie because first of all, her hair is kind of perfect for Laurie Strode, kind of has that 70s sort of like feather wave. And even though she has a very recognizable vintage Barbie face, that look of innocence and kind of that wide eyed sort of, uh, what have I gotten myself into? I was just babysitting some kids for crying out loud. It's really giving Laurie Strode. I had a hard time finding the light blue sort of button-down shirt that she wears, so I think this one will have to do. I gave her some great sort of vintage Barbie pants, and the shoes that Lori wears are more of a um, tan mule, but, but I thought these were a pretty good representation of 1978 shoes. So Lori is babysitting some kids on Halloween night, so she brings with her a pumpkin for carving, and of course, a butcher knife. This is as close to a butcher knife as I could get. It's not bad, actually. <laughs> Next, we have Tree Gelbman from Happy Death Day.
this one turned out so good. Despite the fact that I didn't have the full long sleeve, like baseball shirt. I had a half sleeve one that belonged to Ken and I put the logo that Tree's actual shirt had on it from the movie, printed it out and pasted it onto her sort of makeshift baseball shirt and it's perfect. I also gave her kind of the hot pants that Tree wears in the movie along with some red pumps. I was trying to remember, does Tree wear the pumps throughout the entire movie? Because if so, dang girl, that's some badass survivor skills right there. Like not only running for her life and doing everything that she does in that movie, but in heels. This Barbie is perfect as Tree because her hair looks like it's probably really gorgeous, but it automatically came sort of gluey. <laughs> so it worked perfect for Tree's messy hair. I also gave her a little bit of running mascara. The thing that I love about Tree's costume in Happy Death Day is that for the majority of the movie, she is wearing somebody else's shirt. This is Carter's shirt. Yeah, because remember she was wearing like this hot sequin top and she puts it on for a couple of the scenes, but for the whole rest of the movie, she stays in Carter's t-shirt. So there's kind of this sweet intimacy, like even before they kind of get together. It's probably more that she wanted to be comfortable and didn't give a shit. But if that were the case, I think I would have stolen his shoes. I just have to comment on the character of Tree Gelbman, veering from the trope that the classic final girl is usually chaste, sober, innocent, and sweet. Tree is none of those things. In fact, she's a pretty unlikable character at first. But it's through her repeated survival that she's finally humbled and becomes a good person. This is character development at its finest, and it turns Tree into the strong, powerful, smart woman we're rooting for. The best kind of final girl. Next we have Sydney Prescott from 1996's Scream. I'll be honest with you, this is one of those that I'm kind of meh about. I just did not have the right doll to play Sydney, and also I didn't have her classic recognizable jean jacket. So this is Ken's meh. And this beautiful Barbie, um... She just doesn't look 90s enough. I tried my best to shorten her hair because Sydney's hair had that <laughs> very 90s cut where it was layered and sort of went inward. And she also had very sort of stringy bangs. I tried hard to kind of separate this Barbie's bangs, which are usually a full forehead bang. Also, this Barbie is wearing a lot heavier makeup than Sydney wears. I did try to tone down her lipstick with more of a 1990s like L'Oreal Real Raisin color, which is more along the lines of what Sydney wore. But still, She's awfully pretty. And that's not to say that Nev Campbell isn't gorgeous. In fact, I did a few videos ago of Barbie as the Craft Witches, and Nev Campbell plays one of those characters. And in that video, I had even mentioned how gorgeous Nev Campbell is. It's just that for Nev Campbell in The Scream, I could not find a Barbie that really fit her very well. So, so I almost scrapped this one, but here she is. Also, you're like, what's that in her hand? Yeah, that's supposed to be like her big wireless phone. <laughs> this is more like a smartphone. This is as close as I could get. She's also wearing like a silver watch, which is one thing that Sydney did wear in the movie. And the shoes, meh. I think if I had like a classic jean jacket or at least a shirt that kind of looked like that, it would have made this doll. Yeah, you just, sometimes you just need that one piece. There are certain rules that one must abide by in order to successfully survive a horror movie. Next we have 
Nancy Thompson from 1985's Nightmare on Elm Street. Pretty good. There's a scene in Nightmare on Elm Street where she's talking on the phone and a tongue comes through the phone. So here's that. <laughs> I was really happy to find in my Barbie wardrobe khakis and most of all the pink sort of cashmere sweater that Nancy wears with a long sleeved shirt underneath. This Barbie, I think it's an Irish Barbie, so her hair's a little bit redder than Nancy's, but it's got that great curl in it that Nancy has. And Nancy did wear it sort of pulled back off of her forehead. Great, just everyday, casual 80s shoes. Yeah, I think she turned out pretty good. And I gotta say, Nightmare on Elm Street has one of my absolute favorite scenes, not just in horror cinema, but in cinema, period. There's a scene where they're reading Shakespeare aloud in class and Nancy starts to drift off to sleep. And in that haze between wakefulness and dreaming, she still hears her classmate reading, but now it's turned into this sort of eerie whisper. And lastly, this is my sort of half-ass attempt at one last final girl. Um, I almost didn't show you at all, but since I sort of partially committed, here we go. This is 1979's and 1986's Ellen Ripley from Aliens. is all wrong. I think maybe her shoes are correct in some form. A little bit, maybe. And her hair, kind of, you know. At least in the second movie, where Ripley had shorter hair than she did in the first movie. But look at the makeup. <laughs> this is the only doll that I could find that had short permed hair in my collection. But look at her. She's not really Ripley the final girl. She's like Ripley the pinup girl. <laughs> but what do you think? Kind of passes Ripley? On a good day? That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. Those are my final girls. What do you think? Have I missed any like really major ones? I'll tell you who. Sarah Connor. Sarah Connor. Sarah Connor from Terminator. Yeah, I, I almost did her because oh my God, is that girl badass. Like I used to actually have a little mini poster of Linda Hamilton from that scene where she was like getting ready to go by herself to go like kill the guy who starts Skynet. And she's like standing there in some like sleeveless shirt and you can just see how like muscular she is and she's got those sunglasses on and she just looks so cool. I had that poster in front of my treadmill. It was very motivating. But yeah, but after my failure with Ripley, I knew that I wouldn't be able to do Sarah Connor. I just don't have the clothes in my Barbie wardrobe. So yeah, what are your favorite final girls? Any of these, any others? Let me know in the comments. And thanks so much for coming with me today. I hope you are enjoying spooky season. Let me know what your favorite horror movies are, if you indeed are a horror movie fan, or if not, what's like the most horror you can handle? 
And maybe I'll do like a Barbie version of that. I know some of you have given me some great ideas, so keep them coming. We might be able to get to them before Halloween is here. We shall see. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Okay, let's try that again. Okay. Boo! Ah! Wait. Oh. Ah! <laughs> Barking dogs. Shush!